All right, Steve, you're good to go. Thanks, sir. All right, good uh, morning, everybody. How are you doing? Good. Excellent. Try it again, huh? Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Great. Fantastic. It's good to see all of you. Welcome to the NCFA debate camp. Uh, this Top Cali lecture is going to be pretty surface level. Is anybody familiar with Top Cali? <laughs> How many people have debated before? I know this is a novice lecture, but uh, okay, so some of you have some experience and some of you probably have never heard of Top Cali and what Top Cali is. Top Cali, as you'll see, is a, is a stock issue today, but uh, it's a stock issue that is a little bit different from what you typically hear in debate rounds. You don't always hear Top Cali. Well, why not? For those of you who've debated before. Yes, sir. Do you agree with all the definitions? Right. You agree with the definitions, right? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Why else? Anybody have any example? Think of why you might not hear it. They don't know how to run it. They don't know how to run it, right? It's something that novices, uh, a lot of people, for example, don't necessarily know how to run and know how to run effectively, uh, and so they stray away from it. People think that topicality is a bad part of debate. Some early debaters or people who are beginning the debate actually despise topicality sometimes. But in effect, it's truly, truly an important element of debate. It's a stock issue that must be upheld. Otherwise, the ability to have that debate just disappears completely. And we'll find out how that works today. So that being said, we know topicality is a stock issue, working from that perspective. Secondly, you can see it says up there that stock issue, <clears throat> this stock issue is a priority issue. What does a priority issue mean? It should be considered before any of the other issues. Absolutely. It should be considered before any of the other issues. Now, we've talked about again, what topicality is in the essence of a stock issue. We've talked about it's an important issue that needs to come first. Can anybody tell me why? Why is topicality so important out of all the stock issues? It's not worth having a debate if you can't agree on the definitions of the res resolution. Absolutely. The definitions and really the topic that you're going to discuss. How many of you have experienced, uh, let's say, a casual conversation or a casual debate with your friends and family, and all of a sudden you notice that you started perhaps here, and over the course of an hour or two or three or four or five, you ended up here. And you're like, how do we even get to this point in this discussion? We were talking about this issue, and now we're talking about something entirely different. What are we, what are we talking about? Topicality ensures, it ensures that the affirmative and the debate stays on topic, that they come into the debate with a topical plan. And that's why it's such an important issue. That's why we pay it, call it an A priori issue. If the affirmative team entered our debate and they came in talking about anything in the world they wanted to talk about, could the opposition or the negative, could they adequately have a debate and rebut that type of plan? No, certainly not. And so we tell our judges that top, topicality is always an a priori issue. Whenever you finish running through your shell or through your entire topicality argument, you need to outline that it is an a priori issue and that the judge must vote there first. They must look to see whether or not the affirmative is topical. And then, and only then, if the affirmative is topical, can we have the debate about the topic, the substantial topic, right? Think of topicality as like the gatekeeper. In essence, in reality, we need to figure out whether or not the affirmative meets the resolution or within the resolution. And then can we talk, or we can talk about the impacts and harms and inherency and all the problems that we want to uncover within that debate. So you see there at the bottom of the last component of the slide, in, in essence, topicality is protection for the negative. Now, I like to think of debate in terms of a box, and here's why. <coughs> Imagine this box being everything in the world you can debate about. Everything you can debate about in the world. Topicality and the resolution limit that debate topic, limit what you can discuss as the affirmative in that debate to this section here. Now, that's not to say that there aren't a lot of cases or a handful of arguments that you can make in here about this topic, right? If we look at the resolution over here, we can see it says the United States federal government should increase its development of the Earth's moon in one or more of the following areas, energy, minerals, and water. 
So you can make a case, a number of different cases that are topical within right, the frame of the resolution, but it disallows the affirmative for making arguments over here. That would explode, think of it as exploding the negative research burden in essence. Right? Because if you had to cover everything, could you really have an adequate debate? No. Did you have the depth that we're really looking for to uncover uh, these issues and resolve them? Without that limitation, you simply would not. All right. So let's think about T now in terms of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because as I mentioned, a lot of novice debaters early on really hate this notion of topicality. They despise it. They don't want to hear it around. They want to talk about nuclear war. They want to talk about rare earth minerals and the like. But in essence, topicality is important because without it, there will not be an equal division of ground, quite simply enough. And without an equal division of ground in the debate, we won't have a fair debate. Using the same box, let's imagine now that this box is a football field, or a soccer pitch, whatever it might be. When we begin a game, each team has equal ground that they have to cover equal ground that they have to defend. It would be unfair, for example, if all of a sudden we said, you know what, uh, the 49ers are playing, I like them a lot, and the Dolphins are playing, I don't like them very much. So let's go ahead and change the rules. Let's make it so instead of the Niners having to go all the way down the field, they only have to go perhaps 25 yards. Or now the Dolphins have to go 75 yards to score a touchdown. It's obvious. And the same thing here with ground and, and uh, fairness and argumentation. If we allow our, uh, the affirmative to do anything they want, to not be within this resolution, as I mentioned again, it's exploding that research burden. It's preventing you from being able to actually cover arguments that you want to in a debate adequately enough. Okay? Questions so far? All right. Topicality is also an excellent argument because it ensures that we have rich education from these debates. Again, the concept of the idea of depth versus breadth. Which do you think is more important and why? Depth of a topic, being able to uncover everything and know everything about it, or perhaps just tangentially learning about a million things. If we didn't have topicality, the education, as far as this topic goes, would probably be, uh, well, surface level. And in terms of the types of debates that we do, there's Lincoln-Douglas debate, we have the resolution here, we'll delve into this topic, we'll uncover everything we need this, and then we'll have research and articles and piles and piles of evidence that will compile over the course of the year. Whereas in parliamentary debate, it's a different style of debate, you'll have debates that again cover different topics, as you know from your experience so far in the first few weeks of class, those topics will be picked at random, and you only have so much time to uncover it and uh, uh, understand the full uh, depth of those arguments to be made. All right. The necessary evil, the notion behind this being necessary evil again, lies in that, in that we have to have a quality in the debate. We have to ensure that our affirmative debaters are playing fair and are allowing the opposition to have an adequate response, an adequate uh, rebuttal to the case. And without topicality, it's just not going to be there. Okay. I'm going to continue on, because we're a little bit behind with the timing here. Let's see here. Okay, I forgot to cover that there. Okay, so some guidelines for topicality before we get into the actual format of it. We're going to go into the format next. The first rule of topicality, and really debate persuasion in general, is to know your audience. You'll find sometimes that judges will give you different <laughs> judges will give you different uh, opinions about what they think topicality or how topicality should be played out in the round. Did anybody experience that before? Some debaters or some judges will tell you, "I never vote on T," or "I won't vote on T unless you prove beyond a reasonable doubt." And some judges. Uh, are more apt to pull the trigger on topicality. It's important before you begin your debate to ask questions. Right? Read your judge's philosophy, and when you're outlining your topicality case, be persuasive. Be persuasive. Don't just read the shell that your coaches give you. Right? 
when your coach is giving you an outline format of what topicality looks like, go through it and understand it fully so you know the argument you're making and not just reading it off of a script. And again, it gets down to being more persuasive. If I was to stand in front of you and just literally read verbatim what my coach had written for me, uh, me as a judge in the back of the room, I'm going to question whether or not you really believe that argument, whether you know what you're saying, especially when you get cross-examined, for example, or uh, you're not able to respond without looking at that sheet of paper. So make sure that delivery uh, is as persuasive as possible and that you are actually understanding the argument and not just reading it right off the script. All right, on to more guidelines, the actual format and structure of the Tom Kelly argument. Any questions so far? Good, good. start off with. Good. So, when you're constructing your topicality argument. The first thing you need to do for a judge is outline the definition, the interpretation of the word that you're um, raising in this topicality argument. Now, when you look at the resolution of the board here, the United States federal government should increase, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You look at the entirety of the resolution. I look at a couple words on this, and I see the word increase, and I see the word development. Perhaps, as the opposition, perhaps as the negative in this debate, I hear the affirmative outline their plan specific to this resolution. And in the end, I don't necessarily see them increasing anything. Perhaps, when the affirmative reads their plan, I surmise looking at my definition of what the word development means, perhaps my definition of development is vastly different from what the affirmative's development plan actually is. Again, this is specific to the plan text. That's what topicality is trying to critique. It is the plan text specifically. When I find a word such as this, development, and I determine that my affirmative team, and my opponents in this debate, are not actually developing anything in relation to the plan, I need to, first of all, define for the judge what development means. So your first step is to give a definition of the word or the term or the phrase within the resolution that you're going to say that the affirmative team is not meeting. Step one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there we go. Secondly, now, is violation. Give the first step in outlining topicality cases to tell your judge what the definition is. The second step is to tell the judge how they don't meet. In other words, how your affirmative team does not meet your definition. Specifically, again, you're going to have to tell the judge, look, my definition of development, for example, is long term. Let's say that I have a definition that said development equals years and years of continual development. If the affirmative plan was only to send, let's say, one mission to the moon, and that was the end of it. If this was the affirmative plan, let's send out one package and see what happens. And you think about your definition and it says, no, no, development means years and years of effort. You're going to tell the judge, step number one, here's my definition of the word development. Step number two. Here is how, and here is why, the affirmative team is not topical. In other words, they are not resolutional. 
they do not meet this term, the tell judge specifically. What is the affirmative team doing? The affirmative team is sending one mission to the moon, one space capsule to the moon, whereas, as I outlined in my definition, my interpretation of that word judge, this word development means that you need to have years and years of continual service. Once that's outlined for the judge, they see the discrepancy in this debate. They see where you're outlining the problem and why your affirmative is not topical. The third and fourth step, though, are incredibly important because this is where the judge is going to really lay in and determine why this matters because that's really what he or she will be asking themselves at this point. Sure, you say it means development. You know, development means continual. They say it means one mission. Why do I care? That third step is outlining a set of standards for the judge, or you can think of it as the reason to care. Can anybody tell me some standards they've used or know of in terms of running a topicality? Yes. Predictability. Predictability, yes, sir. What does that mean? That you imagine it is. That you had no way to, I guess, predict how they were going to define it, and therefore you kind of wasted your prep time. Mm -hmm. So back to that term of the definition of development, if you expected it to be long term, Would you ever prepare yourself for a plan that was, let's say, a singular space module uh, trip? Certainly not, right? If you are projecting that development means a certain thing, and it means that long-term action must be taken, you would never consider it would explode your research burden, again, to have to go and find a plan that perhaps just spent maybe all two or three days on developing the moon. It wouldn't be substantial enough. It would be outside of this resolution, and it would be impossible for you to really cover that. So, what's another standard? Yes. Grounds. Grounds. Explain grounds for me. Um, because how they define the case, they have out, or they have more grounds than you do in the case, making the case unfair. Right, absolutely. So the same notion, again, we talked about already with, with grounds and having the equity in this debate. If your opponent explodes that research burden for you, there's absolutely no way you'll be able to rebut and refute that particular case. What's another standard? Grammar. Grammar. Why and how is grammar important in a debate of topicality? Uh, so I think there was this case where uh, the, the United States federal government should uh, agree to to more agreements with Mexico, and then the affirmative just had one agreement. And so the, the grammar was on the S. Within the definition, or within the resolution, you'll also see the term and, or. Does that mean you have to do both? Some people are going to have a definition that, means that says, yes, you do. Right? Other people, of course, will have a definition that says, no, you don't. But the point being is, is this is important. Grammar is important in terms of the resolution and the way it's drafted. I've seen debate rounds as well, for example, where opponents have asked for the plan text, and I see your plan text is written out fully. And punctuation was missing in the debate. We lost that debate because good means something that's substantially different than the United States federal government. And again, I won't get into the nuance of that, but it's important to know that grammar is without a doubt important, and that it is, it can, do, without a doubt, change what you're doing uh, in the resolution of the plan if it isn't uh, kept in check. All right, let's move on here. So I'm making the argument now. Defining terms, this is your format. Oh, I forgot, I'm sorry, I got one more thing here. We've got standards as our third, and then last but not least, what we close out with in the debate, and the topicality argument, is for voters. 
Who can tell me what voters are and how they apply in the Tom County argument? It's yes, what you tell the judge. Uh, this is why you should vote for me. Right. So you need to tell the judge, once you've outlined the standards for debate, why, in effect, they need to vote for you. You've given them what you think is important, and now tell them specifically, what are they going to vote on? So, for example, you might tell them, this is a, a priority issue. Again, always tell the judge when you're telling them to vote for topicality. That is an a priori issue, which basically means look here first, look here prior to looking at any other argument. As I mentioned at the beginning of this lecture, you need to be topical and understand that we're, make sure that you, the affirmative is topical before we can actually get into the substantive component of the debate. You start off by saying, hey, judge, this T is a priori for ground. There's been a loss of ground in this debate on my side of the negative. What's another voter? No clash because of the lost ground. Absolutely. No clash. Much like the standards, they're quite similar. You can tell the judge this is a voter for education. Right? We have these debates for a reason to become more educated, right? to affect change in the world. And when your affirmative is outside of the debate, when you come into this debate expecting a plan specific to the USFG is this topic here, and they come in saying, hey, we should uh, take Blockbuster and I don't know, make it, change it somehow. There's no way you can actually rebut that. There's no way you can. Oh, what if I win this round in the voters and the ground on the standard? I'm sorry? What if I win this round on the voters and the grounds on the standards? You use them in both. I'm not sure if I understand the question which you so mean. You set them twice in. Yes, you see them twice, absolutely, yeah. In effect, you're, when you're outlining the voters for the judge, we usually keep them pretty short. We keep them fashionably short because you've already done the explanation, in effect. You've already done the explanation and outlining the standards for that debate. So in essence, the reasons for the argument, or the reasons that this argument has uh, implications in the round is based on the standards and the voting issue at the end is just a summary of that. You're basically telling the judge, this is a voter for ground, education, no clash, predictability, any of those terms that you use, it's basically a summary of that in the end. What questions do you have so far? Yes, sir. I'm having a little bit of difficulty understanding grounds as a standard. Mm. All right. So when we're playing a game, and I like to think of debate as a game, right? Strategically, we're maneuvering, maneuvering pieces across this board, uh, but just like in any other game, we both, at the start of that game, should have equity. We should have equal opportunity, equal ground, think of it, to winning that game. We should have an equal chance, in essence. So while I'm not going to draw a chess board, of course, a, uh, a debate visually here, think of it in terms of, again, a ball field. When we allow the affirmative to talk about everything in the world, that again is going to explode the research burden on the opposition side of this debate. Right? It should completely explode it. There's no way you can actually uncover and, and research everything you need to. That then provides them an endless, almost endless amount of topics that they can discuss for this debate that they can think about, think of it like this, that they can prepare for. Think of the prep work you do before the debate. That has to be or should be equal to. You should both have an equal opportunity to uncover equal arguments right, on that particular topic. Now, when you go outside of that threshold, threshold being this resolution, the limitation of the debate, when you say, you know what, you don't have to be topical. You can talk about rare earth minerals or energy and water in the moon, but you can also talk about, let's say, uh, U.S. and Russian relations. Imagine a plan text that included something else in relation to energy, minerals, and water in the moon, and it had to do with Russia, since, well, they're not going to send us out to space anymore. 
would you be prepared to talk about U.S.-Russian relations? Maybe, maybe not. But if they were doing something outside of that resolution, outside of that topic, again, you're taking that imaginary line in the sound that, and sand that existed before the debate. You're getting rid of that, and you're giving them more arguments that they can make. Arguments that exist outside of the topic that we're going to discuss in that actual debate. So you can see then how, in essence, the affirmative then, if they don't have to be topical, has a lot more ground in this debate. Think of ground being arguments you can make, cases you can make, as compared to what we presume the negative or the opposition would have coming into this debate with the prep time they had beforehand. Does that make a little more sense? Excellent. Other questions, concerns? Okay, let's continue moving on here. Yes, sir. Actually, real, real quick, I'm sorry. I just, uh, so going over this real quick, definition and interpretation. You are giving your own redefinition, or like your own redefinition of how you think whatever it is is correct. supposed to be. You're not criticizing your definition at that point. That's correct. That's under violation. That is okay, correct. Okay, so basically you talk op first, then affirmative, kind of go going more like that. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. The topicality argument is run in the, uh, it would be the leader of opposition constructive for the mm -hmm. party debate, and of course the uh, one is at uh, one NC for Lincoln Douglas style debate. Yeah. That's, and in fact, when you run topicality, this is an argument you should run right at the very top. If you have two disadvantages and whatever else with your case, counter plan, before you even get to those, pri a priori issue again being topicality, and knowing that we can't even really evaluate a disadvantage. We can't evaluate a counter plan, until we really know whether or not the affirmative is topical, you want to start there first. You outline your definition. You don't tell the judge in that first component, well, look, uh, I think here's what's wrong with their definition. No, you give it to them. You give them your Webster's Merriam Dictionary. Perhaps it is a, uh, an expert in political science who's defined something contextually. Any of those definitions would work in, in relation to your topics. And then secondly, once you told the judge what you define development to mean, you tell them how. And again, you need to be specific, and this is why I say don't just read the shell, right. but be specific in what it is the affirmative does not do. What is it that the affirmative uh, does or doesn't do that makes them topical or not topical? Thirdly then is, and we call them standards, but again, as I mentioned, these are your reasons to care as a judge. You explain those in detail. And then last but not least, the voters are just a summary where you just tell the judge in a word or two, this is a priori issue or fairness, education, brown, whatever it is, and then you move right on to your disadvantage or, your, or other arguments. Yes, sir. Uh, where in this do you specify which definition you're targeting? What, which definition you're targeting? Yeah. Does that make sense? Uh, well, you're not. The definition, you mean the word? They are how they interpreted it. You said at the beginning, like they interpreted it this way, that's a violation. That's a violation, okay. yeah. You tell the judge, look, they, they thought that, de that development meant just simply doing one mission, whereas my definition clearly articulates that we must be there for the long haul, okay. the duration. Yeah. On that note, most people also name their topicality whatever they're attacking the definition wise. So this is topicality development, and then they go and run it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you have a political disadvantage, right, or whatever it might be, political cap disadvantage. And, yeah. and then basically your voters, you're literally just like restating your standards of why the judge should prefer to any like accept the TV. That's exactly correct. Okay. Yeah. You're just restating them in word or two, and that's all you need to do with voters. Right. Precisely. Excellent. So I both mentioned up here real quick how the critic will see it. And I'm not going to hang on this too long because we haven't gotten to answering T yet. Uh, but as you see here, each critic will see topicality differently. There are going to be debate rounds where you feel you've won. You've proven your side of the debate in terms of what development means, and you've clearly outlined why they haven't, uh, the affirmative isn't developing the, the moon. Uh, and you're going to say, look, I, I deserve that round. Well, as you see here, each critic is going to see it differently, and there is no one correct answer. Some judges will look at topicality and say, look, if the definition the affirmative gave is, is reasonable, if it's within a reasonable interpretation of what I thought the framers intended, that's fine. Or some will be more specific and nuanced and looking at, again, like a grammar and a topicality where you're looking at periods and dotting I's and crossing T's, right? So everyone will see it differently, and that's why it's important to be able to explain 
how your opponent isn't topical. Be able to articulate that there is abuse in this round and that there's no way you can adequately uh, win this debate as a result of what the affirmative did. Okay, so know the terms which you will be challenged on. This is getting into answering topicality. As I mentioned at the top here, the resolution of the board outlines every term that the affirmative has to meet. Terms such as increase. What does it mean to increase something? Terms such as development. We all have different definitions or interpretations of what it means to develop something. And, or, etc., etc. Look at all these terms in the resolution and know and think about both sides of them. Have responses. So when you're, of course, running on the affirmative, you know how to answer that. When you're in opposition, you know how to adequately uh, fight your opponent in that as well. Let's see here. I'm move on here. In addition, number your arguments. It gets pretty sloppy by the end of a debate, a topicality that doesn't have clearly numbered arguments, and really any case for that. So, for example, when you are rebutting, let's say, a standard, going line by line, much like you see in uh, numbering these four components of the top of Calvary shell here, if I was going to get into standards and I wanted to rebut their standard of education, perhaps I thought uh, that this was actually it was a very educational round, and I wanted to point out why. Naturally, when you're answering T, tell the judge where you are on your flow sheet. Say, listen judge, on the top of getting down line by line, you go through the definition, you get your counter definition, first of all. You tell the judge how you're not violating the term development. And then you get down and you go line by line, of course, through the standards and voters if you want. But number those arguments and tell us, look, Here's the first reason why I feel my interpretation of topicality or this development is educational. Here's the second reason why. Or similarly, but just rebutting them one by one. Remember those all the way out. So that in the end, the judge can look at each one of those and say, all right, in terms of that standard in education, I agree with these two or these three. And they can make a determination on how they feel about that. And then, and only then, We'll get down to the notion of voters and say, well, okay, I have to pull the trigger. I have to vote uh, against the affirmative in this round because they weren't topical or, or whatnot. So answering T as the affirmative, right? As the affirmative in T, the first thing you need to do is give your counter definition. And partly, you'll give a definition in the prime minister constructive. We already know that. So we have Lincoln Douglas and partly in here. And partly, the prime minister constructive will give their own definition to start off that debate. But in Lincoln Douglas, you're going to have the definition from the affirmative team come out in the second speech, in the second constructive. You need to give a counter def as the affirmative. Outline, secondly, how your interpretation of this, of, uh, this word like development uh, is preferable. And then secondly, why your, res your t uh, definition does not violate your own, excuse me, why your definition of development does not violate uh, that term that you got on at the top. Does that make sense? So you think development means long term, and your plan clearly is long term because you're going to be in the moon for maybe 25 years, and that, as we've outlined, does not violate what I determined development to mean. And so you can talk at length then about how your definition perhaps increases education. Right? You can talk, secondly, about how it does not decrease education. Right? It's showing number one that it doesn't decrease. Number two, areas and examples of where a term like this actually increases the education that comes from this round, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Questions on answering T so far? Got about two minutes. Yes. So when you, you're affirmative, you're responding, you again, you're restating your definition, basically you're saying, and because we define it this, as this way, we're not in violation of, that's, that's correct, how you just flow and go down. 
exactly. Yeah, when you outline that your definition is long-term and that this definition comes from a reputable source, or is the, the term, the, the way we typically think about the term, like in you know, contextually speaking. Secondly, then you tell the judge, look, ergo, I did not violate, I am not non-topical because this is what development means. So all these standards that they outlined for you, one, two, and three, and all the fairness issues they uh, brought up in this debate, they no longer apply. Tell the judge that, why you are not unfair. And, and because this doesn't apply, then therefore you have nothing to vote on, and no reason to go and accept the exactly. uh, yeah, uh, definition. That's exactly it, right? And extend also, don't just say, look, I'm not that. That's a defensive argument. Yes. I'm not being unfair. Explain to them, articulate how you are fair. Right. Fair. Yeah, how your term actually provides more ground, or again, allows for better debate uh, to occur in this, in this round. Good. All right. Any other questions about topicality or concerns? Excellent. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for coming on in this morning. I uh, will see you a little bit later on this afternoon. Good luck the rest of the day with these debates. Well, I mean, I think we're going to say that we're going to have 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 to say that we're going to have